Sometimes it surprises me both how expensive and how cheap display modules are. Like, I found a 420 by 300 something LED display, like a screen that you can plug into one of your bigger Arduinos for 15 bucks. And then I look at something larger like one of the Adafruit 32 by 32 displays and it's like over a hundred dollars. I'm like, okay. And those are just like regular surface mount LEDs, not even an LED screen where they're packed together. But if you look hard enough, you start to find a few interesting things like this. This is eight by eight screens. They're modular. Each one of these little squares comes off and you can stack them in 2D. Eight by eight, red LEDs, they're not RGB. There are no cheap RGB matrices, but it came with, you know, controllers. It's mounted on there. You can put it into an Arduino and there you go. 15 bucks for two of them. So that's eight by eight by eight. You can tell it's made of the finest Chinesium. So there's a whole video series coming on these because I've decided to delve into them because you got the display, you got the controller, you got all the wiring. There's all kinds of moving parts here. It's not just like, oh my God, how many videos can he make about a display unit? No, 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 no. There's all kinds of different things. But let's begin with the actual LEDs because like I said, they come out. You don't technically have to use this controller. It's just pre-built for you. It is the 1088AS. That's an S, not a five. Eight by eight red LED matrix. And it's got 16 pins. Eight by eight is 64 LEDs. So 16 pins, 64 LEDs, pretty good. Also, it has no state. It has no chips. It has nothing in there. It's just the bare LED unit. And that's great because then we can add or not add any chips we want. Now, if you look at the actual data sheet on these things, it's not like it's made by TI, it's, you know, some traditional Chinese thing. But if you look at the actual data sheet, just Google it, Google the PDF of the data sheet, look at it, go cry in a corner for a while and then close the window. It's not hard, it's just annoying, honestly. So it's just this square and on the back of it, you've got 16 pins, two sets of eight, so eight pins here and eight pins here. And on one end, if you look at the ends, the, I guess the sides, the thin sides, one of the sides has a little dimple. So it looks like most of the sides look like this, but one of them has a little dimple like this. That's your little mark. So that little, that little dimple is the mark. So the way I have done this, I went and I, I the, the data sheet's horrible. So I just went and I figured out the pins myself and I'm gonna put it up here in a way that's a little more clear. So what I did was from the top down, here's your square. This is the side with the little dimple. This is seen from above. This is with it in the breadboard because I could do the pins looking at the bottom, but that doesn't seem to make sense. It makes sense that you're looking at it as you put it in the thing that you're doing. So like this, normal, it's in the breadboard. You want to wire it up. So you've got eight pins and eight pins like so. I have called these pins zero through seven and eight through F like it's a hexadecimal digit, zero through 15. I chose A, B, C, D, E, F instead of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, because that way everything's one character. It's nice and easy. So you've got pins zero through nine and pins A through F. Easy, so easy. Now the way it works is you have a column and row select. Basically, you apply a positive charge to one pin, a negative charge to the other pin, and one LED lights up. So it's row select and column select. So there's eight of these pins are for eight rows and eight of these pins are for eight columns. And don't forget your resistor, of course, they're LEDs, you'll blow them out. So what you can do is you could, for example, apply power to one row pin and zero through eight column pins. So you apply power to one row and then however many of the columns in that row or the other way, whichever you want. So you could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight separately. And then you do it fast enough because you trick the human eye. If you have an LED that's blinking at more than about 60 hertz, most people can't detect that. Most people can't even detect, you know, over like 18, 20 milliseconds. You, you really can, but if it's just blinking, you know, changing in frames, you talk about, oh my God, 144 hertz screen. I'm not talking about changing frames in a video game. I'm talking about blinking being detected as smoothness. Like, do you have LED bulbs in your house? They blink. They all blink. So you don't see them blinking. So that's how it works. You, you light a row and a row and a row and a row and a row or the columns and you go through each, you know, one, one by one through the eight of them. And then again, 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 again. And that's what the controller does on that board, which I'll get into in the future. But for now, I'm just talking about the display unit. So you can light up one LED at a time or an entire row or an entire column at a time. The column pins are your anodes. That means they get the positive. Columns are positive. The row pins are where your cathodes are. That means they get the negative. Your rows are negative. So you put your positive power 
on a column pin, your negative power on a row pin. And now it's just which pin is which. Here's the fun part. Your column pins. Column 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. They go this way. Columns. Rows go this way. So this is row 0. This is row 7. This is column 0. This is column 7. Easy enough. Rows, columns. Just like a matrix or whatever. And here they are. 3, A, B, 6, D, 5, 1, 0. Were you expecting one set of 8 pins to be rows and one set of 8 pins to be columns? Oh dear, how that would be nice. And they certainly could have done that. There's no reason they couldn't have. But China. For the rows, row 0 through 7, it is 7, 2, F, 4, 8, E, 9, C. Why do we put up with this? You're looking at this going, why do I want to deal with this? Because first of all, I got eight of them with controller boards ready to daisy chain for 15 bucks. The other reason is even TI ain't perfect. You look at TI as the pinnacle of American engineering, and then you realize they used VCC and VSS in the same data sheet. And then they had an inverting and non-inverting chip and labeled both as inverting. Professional AAA companies might make better stuff, but they still ain't perfect. And like I said, 15 bucks. It's not complicated. It's not difficult. It's just annoying. So just write it down, print it out, and refer to it, and you'll be good. So a quick demonstration. So all I've done is I've taken the display board and put it in a breadboard, which was not easy to get fit, but it worked. The spacing is correct, but the, you know, you can't just put it in the middle of the breadboard because then you can't get to the pins. But I got it in the breadboard across one of these power straddles. And then I just took the pins and rewired them over here so that the rows and columns are in clumps and in order so that that makes sense. So the columns get positive power. So here's the columns. So if I give myself five volts and I got a resistor in there, so I apply positive power to column zero and then I apply negative power to row zero and there it is. And then if I go to row one and two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going down the rows. And then if I move instead the positive power, we're in column zero. We do column zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I wanted to do column zero, one, two, three, four, and row zero, one, two, you see how we're just selecting it? It's just a row and column select. As for resistor size, right now, I've got a 15K resistor in there. Here, let me move this over. A 15K resistor. That's huge for an LED, and it's not that bright. It's indeed not that bright, but you can still see it just fine. So I tried with different values. So 15K, as I said, is visible. You can, it's definitely visible. So if you do this, you'll definitely have the maximum life out of your LED, especially if you blink it. But if you give it 10K, it still looks okay. 5K was quite bright. 1.5K was very bright. And if you go all the way down to a 1K ohm resistor, a thousand ohms, it actually gets bright enough. Here, I can do it. So this is 1K ohms. It's bright. It's really bright. 1K ohms. It's common to see like 470 ohms for an LED resistor, but this is 1K. If I turn it down to half, which should be about 500, just look at this thing. You can see it across the doggone building. So, I mean, you can have it really bright if you want. Oh my goodness, that's bright. But you definitely do not need it that bright. Now, if you're flashing it, you actually can do more with less because you can drive it brighter with less power because you give it time to cool down. So there's that. But yeah, this thing actually wants bigger resistors. The final thing to note I measured, when I had a 15K resistor, I measured 1.74 volts. That's right, only 1.74 volts across the LED. When I went down to a 1K resistor, it was 1.88 volts. So it's actually got a reasonably stable voltage drop and and a reasonably low voltage drop for how bright it is. It's crazy. I don't know. Part of it might be the fact that it's in a little divot because this is flat and you've got the surface mount LEDs in there. So some of the light that would go out the sides may be reflecting up. And so it might be brighter just because there's less light wasted instead of going, you know, in a half sphere, it's going up. That may be it. That may be why it's brighter, but there you go. It's actually got a pretty low voltage drop. So you could drive this thing. You want to drive this with a 3.3 volt supply. That's no problem as long as you have the watts, but still. 
you know, right now, my my power supply is not even reading a full milliamp because I got a 15k resistor. So, you know, I wouldn't say you'd want to do this in low power situations, but if you're not driving it all the time, you could probably use this in a battery driven device just fine if you wanted. So my verdict is you get what you pay for. It works great. It works absolutely great. And it's abysmal to actually pin up. However, once you pin it up, you're golden. <laughs> Because it's extremely simply designed, there's no state, there's no protocol, you're not using I2C or anything. Now you get the built-in controller, which I will in the future. This is the MAX7219 controller on here. And it's funny because I was just looking on Amazon for cheap LED displays. I just wanted to, to see if I could find something. I found this, I'm like, 15 bucks for eight? Well, that'll work. So I got it, I'm like, oh cool, this is interesting. And then I decided to look up the parts, like could I figure out what these parts are? And as soon as I do, I find 6,000 websites because apparently they're very popular and I had just never heard of them. I'm always the last to know because nobody puts me on their mailing list. So this and that chip are very popular and there's all kinds of Arduino libraries and stuff already out there. So if you're tired of hearing my voice, just go Google it, you're good. But I intend to do several different videos on this display, that controller chip, wiring up, and how to use matrices in general, among all my other projects. So look forward to it. And until then, I'll be seeing you.